Hello and welcome to part 44 of a video series on Ease Wonder 2.7. In this video we're going to be looking at sky color versus sky light. Alright, so let's go ahead and dive in. I'll click on the splash screen to get rid of it. And the first thing we need to do is change our render engine, if you haven't already, from the Blender render engine up here down to the Cycles render engine. One of the cool features of the Cycles render engine is that you get light for free. So the first thing I'll do is I'll select the light in my scene and I'll press X on my keyboard and delete it. The reason I can do that is because if I go and switch my viewport shading mode over to rendered, you can see that I can still see my cube even though there is no light in my scene. And the reason why that's happening is because the world, the material of the world is actually projecting light in the color that the world is. So right now the world is this gray color and it's projecting that gray light onto the scene making my cube gray. How do I change that? Well over here in the properties window under the world tab I can change the surface color right here. Now we're going to get into nodes in a sec, but if I click on this block right there, I can choose the color, I can turn up the brightness. And as you can see, that's also changing the color of the cube. If I change the color of the light, let's say I want to make the light a little bit blue to emulate outside, I'll click up here on the blue area, and the cube also becomes blue. Now let's take a step back. I want to set up a really simple scene. So I'll go back into my solid view and I'll press shift A and I'll add a new plane mesh and I'll press S and 10 to scale it up 10 times. And I think I'll grab my Q and press G and then Z and then one to move it up one unit on the Z axis and I'll press enter. So now I've got a really, really simple scene. I've got a cube on a ground and let's say I want my sky color, which I still have up here in the properties window. I want it to be a nice sky blue color. So I'll click on the color box and I'll make it, you know, a nice sky blue. And let's take a look at my scene. Well, right now we have no materials on anything and that's okay. We'll add some in a minute. But let's go ahead and change our viewport shading back down into render display mode. Well, wait a sec, I have a white or almost white floor and an almost white cube. Why is everything becoming blue? Well, that's one of the features of Blender. The fact that your world color, the way that you see it, shines that color of light onto everything, that might be a problem. Now, you can add more lights. If I were to press Shift A here and add a lamp and I might add a area lamp and I'll press G and Z to move it straight up. I can get white light in my scene, but what if I want my sky color to be this nice blue color but not have it project that color of light onto my scene? What if I just want to have no lamp? So with my lamp still selected, I'll press X on my keyboard. What if I want my scene to be lit with white light? or any other color that I choose and not this really intense blue in order to keep everything the color that I want it to be. Well, to do that, we're gonna be using a light paths node. Now, if that sounds scary, don't worry, it's not. The first thing we're going to do is click on this Use Nodes button under the World tab in the surface area of the Properties window. So I'll click on Use Nodes, and then I'll drag this little cross hatched area down because I want a second window. Yep, we need our Nodes Editor window up. So I'll drag that area down, and I'll change this window type from 3D viewport down here on my header to a node editor window. Now right now it has nothing in it. And the reason why that is is because, well, we have nothing selected and right now the node editor window thinks that we're working with objects. If I select, let's say, that cube and I go over to the materials tab, I can click on use nodes and I can give that material a color right here. In fact, I'm gonna give my ground object, which I need to add a material to, I'm gonna give it a green color. And by default, when you add a new material in cycles, it uses notes. So I'll click here and I'll select green. So now we have a nice green color for the grass, but it's being influenced by that blue color. So it's not looking like the color that I want. How do I see the nodes for the world? Well, that option is right here on the header of the node editor window. Right now we're working with nodes only for objects, but I'm gonna switch over to nodes for the world material. And as you can see here, I have a background shader for the world color, and it's not the same as a diffuse color, and it's not the same as an emit color or a shader. It's actually a special background material or shader. Just like any object, it has an output. In this case, it's a world output. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna add a few more nodes. We're gonna add two different background colors, one that's gonna be affecting everything else in the scene. In other words, what color of light projects, and the other will be how we see it. So right now I'm gonna leave this one the way it is, but I'll press Shift A on my keyboard, 
and I'm gonna add a new shader and a background shader. So I'll click on background shader, and then I'll click and put it right below my other background shader. And I'm actually gonna have to combine these two with a mix shader. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, because you haven't seen notes before, I actually made a beginner video on notes. So if you never use the cycles render engine with nodes, I'll put a link to that on the screen right now. Let's go ahead and add a mix shader. So I'll press shift A and I'm gonna select shader and mix shader and I'll click there and I'm gonna drag it so sort of in between the output and these two background shaders and I'll put it right on that one to connect it automatically. Now when it does that, it gives it a factor and that's because it's using only 50% of this value along with right now black because this one has no input. What a mix shader does is it basically takes the two inputs and it blends them together by a different factor. If I turn the factor all the way up to one, it uses only the bottom slot. If I turn it down to zero, it only uses the top slot. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug the white uh, or almost white color, in fact, I'll turn it all the way up to white. I'll grab this node plug and drag it into that one. So now if I drag factor up to one, we get a white sky. But that's not what I want. I want it to be a blue sky, so I'm gonna drag it straight down. Now the way that you make the light on the scene different than the color of the background is we have to use a light paths node. So let's go ahead in our node editor window and press shift A, and I'm gonna select input and light path. Now, this is a really, really powerful node. It basically allows you to control the way that light bounces in your scene relative to other objects. You can see there's a ton of options here, and I'm only gonna touch about one in this very introductory video on this node. But what I'll do here is I'm gonna use the is camera ray output. So I'll take that output and drag it into the factor. And now what you can see, and I'm gonna do a little bit of organizing here. What you can see here is that it's taking only this bottom color. So what I'll actually do here is I'll switch these two around. I'll just drag the input up to this one and they'll automatically switch. And then I'll organize these a little bit better. What it's doing is it's only taking the light from the upper input the upper material and it's projecting that color of light onto the scene. So right now, our white cube is pretty well white, that's because that's the light color it's receiving, but the sky color is the bottom color. So that's how you use the light paths node to have a different color light than your sky color. All right, so now in our scene, we have white light with a blue background, and that's great. But what about this white cube here? Why is it green? Well, the way the cycles render engine works and the way that light actually bounces in the real world is when light bounces off of an object with one strong color and something else is very near to it, the light of that color will actually bounce onto that second object. So as you can see, we have an almost white cube that's getting a lot of green, especially on its sides from the very green ground. How do we stop that? Well, to do that, we're also gonna use the light paths node, but we're gonna use one more different output, the is diffuse ray output. So I'm gonna switch back into my material nodes with this little button right here. And I'm gonna select the ground. Now it is actually selected and I might go back into material viewport shading just so we can see the object without the actual light. Now again here, we're gonna to have to space our nodes out of this material to add in a mix shader and a second node and a light pass node. So I'll quickly do that, shift A. I'm gonna add a shader, it's gonna be a mix shader. I'll drag that into that noodle right there. I'm gonna press Shift A, and we're gonna add another diffuse shader. Remember, this is an object, so we're not using background. I'll drag it up there, and I'll connect this noodle with the white color, or almost white color, into the bottom input of this shader, and I'll change this material color to totally white. Let's go ahead and add that same light paths note, so I'll press Shift A, and it is in input and light path, so I'll click and place it. And then this time I'm gonna drag the is diffuse ray option into the factor. Now when you do this, just like last time, this is diffuse ray option actually takes over the factor so you no longer get the slider. But let's go ahead and check out what this looks like now in rendered viewport shading mode. So I'll go down here, I'll change our viewport shading to rendered. And as you can see now, even though we have a green ground and a white skylight, that diffuse color is not bouncing up onto the cube. So that's another use for the light path node. There are a lot more options for it, but that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.